I also think we're very, very fortunate tonight to have uh, Albania's ambassador to the United Nations with us, Farid Hoxha. I'm sure you all read his compelling comments to the New York Times in Joe Berger's wonderful article that appeared last month about saving the Albanian rescue, I should say. With that, Farid. Thank you very much, and thank you, um, Shirley and Joe. Um, I would like to say on behalf of Albania, on behalf of the Albanian government, how much we appreciate what you have been doing in the last uh, two, and a, um, two and a half decades, what, how you um, have been supporting Albania and Albanians everywhere in the region, and if Albania is what today uh, a country developed and looking towards the future, it is also because you have contributed to that. In your documentary, you showed that Albania resembled when you first went there to North Korea. That's true. Today, Albania has no better friend than the United States of America, and you have contributed to that. Many things and very important things have been said tonight about Albania and Albanians. They could not make me prouder of my people, of my nation. And I would like to thank all the important speakers for their words of recognition. I think that after um, um, the, the course of this evening, you already know almost everything about the Albanian story of saving the Jews. But what makes the Albanian story a very particular one is that contrary to every other narrative of the Holocaust, there is no sad story in the Albanian one. It is not about death of innocent people in an effort to exterminate a nation. It is in its entirety a story of courage, a story of humanity, a story of compassion, respect, and love for the other. It is simply a story of life. The easy way for me would have been to just read the remarkable piece that um, Joseph Berger wrote a couple of weeks ago in the New York Times, but I think you have all seen that. So I will just make a couple of um, comments which, in my view, encapsulate the essential of the Albanian behavior. The most important um, fact to remember is that the entire Jewish community, everyone, rich and poor, educated or not, uh, young or old, those already living in Albania or everyone who came from outside, they all were met with an open door, a warm heart, and offered the secure shelter that others around Albania refused to them. Whatever the time, whoever the ruler, whatever the difficulties the country has been through, and it has been through in its long history, there is one fundamental thing to remember. There is no history of anti-Semitism in Albania. There is no experience of hate speech. There is no bigotry. Respect for others' religion, culture, and heritage has been a fundamental part of the Albanian society since ages, a value carefully transmitted through generations, something we dearly cherish and strictly observe today. It was mentioned there were a handful of countries in Europe that stood up and saved thousands of Jews, thankfully. But what makes the Albanian story and behavior unique are the very simple yet meaningful facts. Every Albanian Jew survived the Holocaust. Every Greek, Yugoslav, Austrian, Bulgarian, German Jew who was lucky enough to enter Albania also survived. No instance was ever found that any Albanian asked any retribution for what they did. Like no other occupied country, Albania became a Jewish sanctuary and it had, it was mentioned, 10 times more Jews within its borders at the end of the war um, than at the beginning. In Albania, in the US, in Israel, and elsewhere, we honor the exceptional courage of the righteous and Gentile, and rightly so. But what is fundamentally different about the Albanian story is that Jews were not rescued in secret by the exceptional good persons. Entire villages knew about the Jews in their midst, and no one ever turned anyone in. This, <laughs> this, 
This is the very exceptional behavior of an entire society, whatever their social class, whatever their origin, whatever their religion or their beliefs. It is a deep sense of pride and honor, a willingness to care for the other, a profound sense of hospitality to welcome, uh, honor and protect at any cost a guest or whoever in need, a timeless readiness to help with whatever available that explains this behavior. And for all this, we just have one word, and that is besa, which means the promise. You give the word and you keep the word. You promise and you deliver. It has been then and it is now, and there are no foreigners in Albania. There are only guests. And Albanians know how to treat their guests, and they've shown that. One final word. <clears throat> it, it was amply mentioned, but evolving at the UN for the last four years, I couldn't mention, I could not miss to mention that. This event couldn't be more timely, surely, and Joe. Tomorrow the UN will commemorate the 65th anniversary of the Convention on Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, and we have this excellent um, explanation um, um, by the previous speaker. This important piece of legislation has gone a long way. 144 countries have ratified it, including Albania, but there is still a lot to do. The terrifying stories of Rwanda, Bosnia and Kosovo, to mention the most recent ones, remind us that we must remain vigilant, that unfortunately history repeats itself in its worst, and that our duty is to never forget. The world has become a better place, there is no doubt, but it's hardly a perfect one. Humanity will improve if we continue to learn from our past tragedies and our own mistakes. If we keep up the memory of the brave and never forget the consequences of hate, discrimination, and indifference. Thank you.